Good evening. Glad you're here tonight. Uh, back in, I, I guess, back in studio. I was on location <laughs> last week. Uh, we uh, now tried to uh, broadcast. We took a little sojourn into New Jersey, and uh, a lot of things happened unexpectedly that wound up at the Hindenburg site uh, versus being back home uh, to where I thought I was going to broadcast from. But uh, uh, going to try to try to repeat some of that tonight because I think it's important uh, talking about the nature of God and who God is and literally who he is and uh, Wayne's with me again tonight I appreciate that and uh, uh, just as we get started I'm gonna ask Wayne to pray for us tonight and then we'll get looking at our, our Bible study so Heavenly Father we come to you today in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you that we can learn so much through your names Lord God and and your word that is special revelation we pray that tonight lord god you will bless this time and help us to to learn more about you so that we can uh, share with others uh, why we believe what we believe lord god and that you are lord and king of kings lord god we pray uh, for wisdom and discernment tonight and good conversation and in jesus name we pray amen amen well wayne we started one of the things we talked about and i kind of want to jump just for a moment into uh, the New Testament and uh, in Luke 11 uh, that's a um, Jesus has been off in the mountain praying and, and uh, he comes down and his disciples ask him teach us to pray like John taught his disciples to pray they'd seen Jesus out praying but Jesus begins teaching that the, the Lord's Prayer and um, that and again, our Father in heaven, and, and what does he say after it? Hallowed be what? Hallowed be your name. Name. And the uniqueness of that, I, I think it's a couple of things unique about this that we're going to cover tonight. The I idea of the idea of God being Father uh, in a very personal nature, but our Father has a name. And, um, you know, I know my grandson, uh, uh, when he was about six years ago, uh, we were out at their house in Chickasha, and... Um, he knew me as granddad, but my wife called me Mark. Oh, yeah, and he yeah, goes, yeah. Mark? And he thought that was just funny. Foreign. <laughs> Foreign. Foreign. And yeah. he started in for a while where, where I was getting, wasn't getting called granddad. I was getting called Mark and, yeah. and uh, kind of went through a phase where, where he learned my name. And, and But our names are important to us, aren't yeah. they? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I was dealing with that today. Actually, I was talking to my students about, you know, how I was in, and I was Sergeant Lamont. And can we call you Sergeant Lamont? I said, Yeah, I'd probably let you get away with that, but not <laughs> anything else, right? See, right? If they were to call me Wayne, it well, would feel inappropriate, right? right. Because you know, it's of, of, of that the respect. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's exactly. funny how there's a lot in the yeah. name. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know when I was pastoring in New Mexico, I I, um, I made a transition to working full time at a school, at a public school. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd known a lot of these kids in the community, and they knew me you know one way and then I started working at school well, the school had a rule I mean yeah. I, I I they were to call me Mr. Simon right and I remember one kid in particular said no <laughs> and uh you know I said I'm sorry but that's you know yeah. the way it is it's and, my and positional uh, title positional right? title Absolutely. yeah you know and, and uh the hat on yeah <laughs> and so um anyways and and so but our names are important to us and and the fact that God has a name and I think that's really unique to the to both the, the Jewish faith and the Christian faith, particularly, um, you know, we, we take our heritage out of out of out of the, the Old Testament, out of the, uh, mm -hmm. God revealing Himself to the Jews, and we're going to talk about that tonight. But um, when we go into to Exodus and Moses, uh, well, let me start let me start back a little ways. Genesis one one, um, we see that. At the very beginning, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that term there in, in the Hebrew language is, is Elohim. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's a very generic name of, of God. It would be, um, in Greek, in the New Testament, it would be uh, Theos, or Theos. And uh, we would, uh, but it simply means if we, go out and say well God told me uh, right <laughs> is this God and, and it can mean doesn't even have to necessarily mean the Christian God it's right. just a, a term a general term for God mm -hmm. and uh, out there and and uh, uh, 
you, you see that, and um, again, just, just saying that term. But another term that we find here and is the term Adonai. Uh, in Greek, kurios, um, but it's the term Lord. Now, there's some truth with this that when you, when you look at this, it, it, it can be applied to humans as a, as a sign of respect, like sir, or I, I know I had a, a great uncle who, who was of, a, of another faith. Let's just put it that way, that, that I wound up in a long discussion with. But uh, he had immigrated from Germany a, at a time. He was, he was old enough to remember that and living in Germany, and he still remembered that. But he, he, he didn't believe in Jesus as Lord. He didn't believe Jesus was God. And I know part of that discussion about the Lord, he said, wow, well, I, uh, when I, when I from, if I were from Germany, I would have been Lord Herr Telkamp, Lord Telkamp, you know, and, and he's not incorrect, right. that, that idea of lordship. So what do you think the significance, what do you think the significance of that term? I'm going to throw you under the bus right here. I mean, Lord. Of, of I, Lord. I, and, uh, I think of it as a master right so okay uh above you above. know common okay okay you know, so uh special kind of if if he was lord uh your your uncle right he would have been that would have been a sign of respect respect i would think right like right mister um and that's how i see it as basically master okay uh, you know ruler kind of in, in that 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 title lord there over. with that and and um you know i think we're going to get into this uh a little bit when we get into the New Testament with this uh, one of the early Christian confessions or the earliest Christian confession was simply Jesus is Lord mm -hmm. and um, the significance of that the significance of that statement for those people to say that matter of fact it was such a significant statement um, it went beyond just just respect went into his identity right because the romans wanted them to say caesar caesar is lord and, and the jews probably would have seen that as blasphemy oh uh, yeah right yeah yeah, so yeah. and like. and and that idea and they just yeah and the jews would have seen that as right. blasphemy because yeah. of that that title, sure, the title. with that mm -hmm. and matter of fact the jews and we're going to get into the covenant name of god here in a minute um they wouldn't even say that once a year. They said that they're just so afraid of misusing the right. name of God in some right. way. And so they'd a lot of times put Adonai in that place. Matter of fact, if you come to an English translation of your Bible, one of the things that you find, Lord in all caps, caps. Yeah. Uh, all the letters in caps, that's not Adonai there. That's the, the other name we'll talk about in a little bit um, when we get to that, that, that point. But but again, the, the, the Christians were willing to die rather than say Caesar is Lord. Right. And, and they weren't really just being this radical defiant, just telling you the truth. No, Caesar's not Lord. Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's the boss. <laughs> he's, right. the, he's, he's the one. Sure. And, uh, King of kings. And so Adonai is a significant term. And you're going to find that through, through, throughout Scripture. But... We get to a place, and if you turn to Exodus chapter 3, and if you're in there following along with us in your Bible, that um, you find this story of Moses' encounter with God. And something happens here, something unique uh, with this, um, because God's revealing himself. You, you know, we see this story, we move through Genesis and uh, the call of Abraham, and, and, uh, and I really didn't honestly go back and look at everything where, where these things, what, what words are used in that, but very specifically though, when, when Moses is called to the mountaintop and encounters God at the burning bush um, and God says I want you to go, you're going to go to Pharaoh, to back to Egypt and go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go and Moses doesn't particularly want to go no. and um, pick up and read if you would uh, Exodus 3, 13 and 14. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. 
And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me okay. unto you. What we find here, this is, this is God telling Moses, this is my name. This is my identity. I'm not just God. I'm not just this generic God. I'm specific. And there's some things that, that go with this. I have a name. And uh, again, in English, it's just simply I am. Uh, kind of a uh, mis I mean, it seems. Yeah, I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very I am definite. What, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm all. I'm all. And, and, and y you find that phrase there. But it, it's. When you see the letters in Hebrew and, and, and you read, it's just a four letter combination. Actually, two of the letters are the same. Uh, if we did it in English, it would be Y-H-W-H. Uh, no vowels. As a matter of fact, right. that's one of the problems. Because another way we've said that is Jehovah. And you find Jehovah uh, used out there a lot. And uh, I went back today and refreshed my memory as, as, as to how that, uh, you know, because introduced that term Yahweh. Well, we be honest with you, we really don't know how the early Hebrews would have say, said their right. name. Uh, Dr. Gordon was my Hebrew professor in seminary, and some student would raise his hand, well, how, how would we say that? He goes, I don't know. We'd have to dig up an old dead Hebrew to find out. Uh, one of the issues in, in Hebrews when they spoke would obviously include vowels <laughs> right. in there, but when they wrote, they didn't include they didn't vowels. Include vowels. Right. And now, for our benefit, uh, somewhere scholars down the line started coming in, they called them vowel points and right. put those things into that Hebrew language so we could kind of make a little more sense from our English sensibilities and Western sensibilities of trying to make sense right. of that Hebrew language. But it's a very simple language in some ways. Um, but you just see that, that, that phrase, Y-H-W-H. And Jehovah was a potential way of pronouncing mm -hmm. that name. From what I read today and the studies today, most scholars don't think that's the way. Right. And they lend more toward Yahweh versus Jehovah. Mm -hmm. But that name still sticks. It still has meaning to us. And matter of fact, one of the things they said, how important it is, how important is it that we actually get the pronunciation right? Yeah. Uh, Go either way, I guess. Right? Yeah, I, I mean, I think from standpoint, I think what, what they wound up saying is we just simply don't know. Yeah, we can't. Yeah. We can't know. And, w and, and so... And they were asking us not to get hung up on that too much right. from the standpoint. It's more important we know the God sure. of that person versus exactly how you'd say his name yeah. uh, in that. And, and, um, but it's, 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 it's just an important uh, part of, of, again, you find Moses there doing that. And, and if you swing over to the Ten Commandments, uh, just a few um, over to Exodus 20. One of the things it's uh, one of the um, Hebrews uh, twenty verse seven. Uh, just one of the one of the commandments is you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Um, you're not going to misuse that name. Um, the idea of God takes Himself seriously. Yeah, yeah, uh, reverence, reverence, or even there. the name, because the, na the name yeah. is set apart. Yeah. You know, you know. Have you ever had your name kind of misused, or, or some way somebody, uh, uh, we were talking a little bit, um, uh, I, I, I used to, as a kid, uh, people would take my first name, George, <laughs> and I got made fun of sometimes yeah. because of that, you know, and they definitely misused my name in some ways, and came of little phrases oh, and, yeah. and things like that and yeah, it doesn't, doesn't uh, you know uh, anything learn to it take rhymes it. with yeah <laughs> and uh, kids do that to yeah. but um, but there is a point in time too where where I, I go back to my grandson using my name Mark just to and I know my daughter-in-law really came in she said no mm -hmm. that's he's a person of respect in your life he's a person of I didn't right. correct him on that, but she certainly did. Sure. You can call him granddad. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You know, and, um, you know, 
going for there. So there is the idea that we, we want to, um, to, to honor that name. It, it's, and, and, it's, and it is unique in the sense that it's the, we have the Judeo-Christian religion is the only one that has a personal name for God. Um, Buddhism doesn't have a God. No. Yeah. Hinduism has, well, they may have names, but, but million, just yeah. millions, right. mi- literally millions of gods. Uh, in, in Islam, there's really not a name of God, but, but in the Judeo-Christian tradition that, that, that God has a personal name, and he gave it to us. We didn't pick him. Right. He said, no, this is who I am. Uh, that's an important aspect of that. But one of the things, what, what do we, what was God going to do for the Israelites? He was going to take them and, and take them into the promised land. Take them into the promised land. He was going to redeem them. He, he chose them. Yeah, chose them. Right. He chose them and he was going to lead them out mm-hmm. and, and redeem them from captivity. And so, so the idea here that, that, this, this name is this personal redeeming name. Interestingly, Jesus is, is, a, is a form of Joshua right. in the Hebrew, and it simply means Jehovah is my salvation. He's my redeemer. And so you see this again, Jesus respecting the name of God, hallowed be thy name, Lord, uh, right. in that, and, and um, just finding again, and we'll talk about the significance here in a little bit, with that, so so we see again the first name Elohim just simply means God. Adonai means Lord. Yahweh is His name. I am, and in that personal nature. But I want to turn over to uh, because I think this is where we need to go with this is the personal nature of God and the significance of that. If you would turn over to John 17, um, we already talked about one of the prayers that Jesus again. Uh, if you want the long version of, the, of really the model prayer you find in, in Matthew chapter 6, um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done uh, on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, in Luke 11, uh, you find a shorter version of that prayer. I, I really believe Jesus taught those that more than once. Uh, you know, you have that recording of there. But, um, but this is another prayer. This is the end of a long discourse that takes up John 14, 15, 16, and Jesus concludes this discourse with a prayer. This really is the Lord's Lord's prayer. prayer, This is his prayer. Just before his crucifixion, lots there. We're not going to look at the whole prayer tonight. I want to concentrate on the first three verses because I think we're going to see something here when we look at this. So so read those if you would. So one through three? Run through three, right? All right. These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Okay. Something significant in here, I think, in this is that this is an incredibly personal prayer. Jesus is addressing, in this case, his father. And we talk about the fatherhood of God, and boy, there's debate. And I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not sure where I've landed on this, but since that that God's father, in the sense of creative order, that that um, I, I've, I've read some things that people. No, no, he's not their father. He's their creator, but not their father. And I, I may buy into that some. Right. But we, as Christians, God is our father by adoption. We, we've been brought into the family of God. We have that privilege of calling him father through that. Jesus taught us to call him father. But Jesus is unique in that relationship, in that his sonship is one of being begotten. Right. It's unique. Only one to experience that unique nature of that but he calls and addresses him as father and, and he's talking about uh, that is uh, several places throughout the new testament uh, in the gospels uh, something's happening jesus says it's not my time it's not my yeah. hour and well now it is yeah. everything's coming to a culmination here and um he talks about glorify your son that his son may glorify you we're gonna we're gonna support one another in this um 
And he talks about his power and authority over over the flesh, over the world um, that, that all whom you gave have given me. And he talks about giving them eternal life. But then he defines eternal life. And how does he define eternal life? Um, that they might know you or know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ who okay. God has sent. So here's this idea of God being able to be known. Mm-hmm. Being able to be known. And we go back into this this issue of knowing the name of God. I know when I when I was in college and I had not met my wife, but I saw her one day in a stairwell of uh, going to class and we looked at each other and smiled and I'm like I'm interested <laughs> in that person. I didn't know who she was. I didn't know who she was, but there was a guy. I said, do you know who she is? Yes. I, I want to know her name. I want to know her name. Right. And, and, and did. And, and you know, eventually we get married, and, and, and th- there's, there's a knowledge there of one another, uh, personal, intimate knowledge. And I think the idea here is, is one of knowing God in a personally intimate way. I like what Henry Blackaby says about eternal life. He said, so often we think of eternal life as heaven. That's a place. And yeah. he said, That's, heaven's a byproduct. Right. Yeah, you get to go to that place, but right. what makes the place significant is who's there. Yeah, exactly. You get to <laughs> eternal life in a person. It's right. in a relationship with a person. Yeah. And, and so uh, we see this personhood of God. Um, You know, I, I've used the illustration before, too, of, of knowing God in a personal way. I, I mean, I know who the President of the United States is. I, I would know him. I think if I saw him on the street, I think I would know him. Yeah. But I don't know him. Mm-hmm. And he didn't know me. Yeah. And if I tried to approach him and say, hey, Joe, you yeah, know, well, the Secret close. Service is going to be all over me, have my nose in the ground and whisking him away, I, I, I don't have any knowledge. But when my dad was alive, I saw my dad walking down the street. And I said, hey, not only recognize you, I know you. Right. Run to him. Yeah, run to sure. him. Sure. And, and so and we, we see the personal nature of yeah. this this eternal life that, that and, and, and yes, I think it starts, can maybe starts in its infancy and um, in a growing knowledge of God and with a sanctification as we grow in our knowledge sure. of him, but, 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 but we know him in a in a personal way. Um, let's talk about some things like this. One of the things, uh, um, you know, with God having a personal name, that makes him this, the supreme personal spirit. John uh, writes in, in the fourth chapter, he's talking to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, and he says uh, that, that God is spirit and we worship him in spirit and truth. And uh, But it's important, he says, that we worship him. What's the significance you think calling God him, I mean, versus it, or that was personal. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so we know what him is, just like what we just talked about the father. Right. So, using the term father, we know that we can embrace him. Right. We can right. go to him. Right. You know. Um, then there's Lord. We know there's a respect, almost like right. the president. You know, there's right. these different terms okay. that we can n- get a better picture of who God is. But him um, basically gives us. Uh, something to reference right to know? reference on right sure I, I i think it's you know we talk about god being spirit and i think it's real important god is a person but he's not a human right you know jesus christ the man jesus christ right. is a human being a man. uh the yeah. god the son right. the spirit but but i i'm sure how that all plays out i, I really I, I don't have all the answers to all the <laughs> questions i have but but god is spirit and and even the idea of god's maleness a uh, him um, it doesn't mean he's a human male, right? Uh, it it's the it, it's the father figure. figure. He's, the know, right. he's the initiator. He's the initiator. Sure. He's the. the I had somebody tell me once about you know the the whole I won't even go in that whole conversation about somebody said well God's a woman and I said uh, well I'm not sure what you mean by that yeah <laughs> but but yeah. even but uh, I, I I don't think God's a man like we're men more than God's a woman like somebody else is a woman. Right. Uh, it, it's, it's, well, he's, he's complete. He's complete. Yeah, he, whereas yeah, he's, we're not. He's spirit. I mean, that, that spirit being, but but he's a perfect. Perfect, yeah, sure. yeah. And 
Um, and there's some mystery in that in, oh, in yeah. some ways. So, but um, but we see these these uh, he possesses all the qualities attributed to being a person. He thinks, he feels, he decides. He, um, I mean, just just that idea of personhood. He's a sentient being. That that is, of course, the ultimate <laughs> uh, in that. But um, it almost gives us more of a relationship too with Jesus and, and through the Father, because we know that He can empathize. Right. right. He ha- He has hungered. Yeah. He has been tired. He has, you know, worked hard or whatever. He, whatever he, we've been he through. He came I- as that example. To Absolutely. Us. How to do? Th- I'm going to show yeah. you how to do this perfectly. Right. <laughs> And now we have an example. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. going to get in. We Sunday morning, we're going to get in Thessalonians. You know, one of our, our mission statement as, as as a church is is to know and imitate God. Yeah. And uh, at its most simple level, and Paul's going to talk a lot about imitating. Uh, you know, he says, it doesn't say it in the Thessalonians passage, but other places, he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Mm-hmm. And uh, that teaching model, mo- model that we, 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 we have there. And so, again, yes, we see that nature in Christ um, you know like what somebody said once he said God the father sent the son into the world so that we could know what he's like right but not right. only that we could see what he intended us to be right yeah <laughs> this is my intent yeah and you messed it up but this is this is the model yeah I was <laughs> trying to explain that we were talking before and I tried to explain that like this guy just started talking to me at work one of my friends and and wanted to know everything in five minutes you know <laughs> I mean? like from like in three examples <laughs> to jesus i'm like all right you know yeah. But yeah i did mention that you know jesus came to show us yeah what yeah. the law couldn't fulfill and you know it was more and the example you know right right um yeah i've been talking a lot with my students too um you know to be eternal minded that's the meaning of the christian you know wow that's um, great so yeah yeah well it, it it's and I think it's important that we, we have that, that personal nature of God. And, and uh, boy, there's lots of examples I can think of. But, but there's some things that this rules out. And I want to turn over to Deuteronomy. Um, again, chapter uh, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Um, this, this passage is probably one of the most significant, I believe, in the Bible. All the Bible is important. All the Bible's truth, uh, without any mixture of error. We'll get into that later. But there are passages I think that are that are definitely significant. And the fact that, that later on Jesus is going to use this, uh, what's the greatest commandment of the law? He's going to say this. And uh, well, and all the all the rest of the scriptures hinges on. You know, he does this I think a couple yeah. of times where he said all the rest of the scriptures hinges on this. Well, that right. seems like that'd be pretty significant. Yeah. And uh, read, read 6, 4, and 5. What does it say? It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Okay. So you probably heard that before. If you, you've um, the great command, and, and uh, we know that out of Leviticus, I believe, or I think it's Leviticus numbers, I can't remember exactly uh, right now, but it's love your neighbor as yourself, uh, tied into that. Um, but here, but really verse 4 is really one of, and, and, and this is again called the Shema. It's something that the Israelites, not just this, all the way through verse 9, would repeat daily, mm-hmm. uh, teach their children this. This yeah. is something that they would um, learn. But, but when it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, and at this point, this was the term right here that, that the Lord our God, Elohim, is one Lord, or the Lord is one. That second Lord, uh, all caps, there is um, the term Yahweh mm-hmm. in there. And so uh, you see that. But uh, again, there's several things here that I think I want to see. In this, w- we find that God is superior to all. He's superior to all things. Um, there are some out there who, who believe in a and they call it yin and a yang, that there's, there's got to be this right, equal right, opposite right. type thing. And, and they talk about good and evil or dark and light. And they balance each other out. That's a very Eastern right. um, way of thinking uh, in that. And it's 
but it's certainly not biblical or Hebrew thinking, uh, biblical thinking in that, and that God is superior to evil. That um, you know, God when God created the heavens and earth, every time He created it, He said, "This is good." Good. There was right. nothing that God created that wasn't good, right. and good stood out. And the, 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 somebody's asked, "Did God create evil?" No. <laughs> But he did make evil possible to exist in the fact that he let us have a choice. Yeah. He set a boundary and let us have a choice in that boundary. Yeah. And so evil entered through the world, but um, just as like dark and, dark and light are not equal, um, right. light always overcomes darkness. Yeah, there's uh, no dark and there's light. There's no dark. There's yeah. no light yeah, and dark. dark and light. Right. And so um, uh, with that. but So, so it, it denies that dualism. Um, God's superior being a personal being. Something else that this verse denies is that that um, or, or it states I think and then it denies something else it denies, it, or first it states the unique and separate, God is unique and separate from his creation. He's all powerful but he's unique and separate from what he's made. If the universe didn't exist, God would still exist. Mm-hmm. And that's really that idea that God's wrapped up in everything right. all things is pantheism again you see that creeping into a lot of things in our, our world today eastern religions are really popular but again it's not biblical right it's not biblical christianity and then the last one the idea that god is one which denies polytheism that there are many gods um, uh, but there's something unique in that also in the paradox i don't know if the paradox is the right word but god is one person yet reveals himself to us how in three Three Trinity, distinct right. persons, distinct right. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right. and you see that running throughout, and and, and you see that leads to it in the Old Testament, but not clearly stated. But boy, once Jesus comes on the scene in the mm-hmm. Gospels, you see this, and then Paul's writings and Peter's writings right. and, and the other writings of that this triune God. Um, there's, and we'll get into this more later, uh, talking about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and the uniqueness of each one of them, but that God was in relation you know the the question was if God is love who is he loving before he created everything well the father loved the son yeah the son loved the spirit and the spirit loved the father and that relationship already existed Um, it's it's tough that's not yeah (laughs) (laughs) we're not going to explain the trinity tonight And, and let me just the trend the word trinity it is true it is not found in the bible but it is a human word to try to ex- explain mm-hmm. a divine truth. Right. That, that God is one yet three distinct persons. Right. That Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the divine truth that we, we came up with a word to, to, to try to, to, to codify that, to put it in some kind of way that we could, we could get a hold of it. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And uh, we're, it's like, let's, let's take five minutes to explain that. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. heresy, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to come up with some illustration that I've seen a lot of, a lot of memes. If you try to explain away the, yeah. or explain or illustrate the, the, the Trinity, you're just going to yeah. commit heresy. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, this yeah. all there is to it. Fall short every time. <laughs> Confuse and, uh, yourself. And, uh, well, I, I want to close with this, just an illustration out of this. And, and I think the uniqueness, because the idea that we as individuals can know the personal name of God and address the personal name of God um, individually mm-hmm. without a mediator yeah. is an incredibly important thing, incredibly uplifting thing, that I can go directly to the creator of the universe and have a conversation and he cares about me, and he knows my name. I think that's, you know, the the, the passage about God knows the number of hairs on your yeah, head. Hairs on your head. My, my personal interpretation of that, I really, I really think he was that r- written two thousand years ago. They were trying to find some way of illustrating just the fineness. Sure. The, I really believe something that today. If we said that in modern, he knows my very DNA. Mm-hmm. He knows my my yeah. DNA makeup. Yeah. He knows the code. He knows my code, and, and is 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 
incredibly aware of that. Um, and, and my job on my end is to get to know him better. I'll never know him like he knows me. Right. But, um, but I think the let, let, let me let me just close with this illustration. Um, when we had the cold, cold weather here a couple of weeks ago, and and uh, on the the power went out in a lot of places all over the state, and real crisis for for a lot of people. And one of the interesting, the the head of ERCOT, the CEO of ERCOT, was on the news, and he got up and he was doing a press conference, and he reassured everybody, my family's power is out too and he's trying to read it I'm not you know this is this is affecting everybody yeah. and including my family you know but I thought about that and and I'm not promoting air cut or dissing them or anything right now I'm just using this as an illustration I guarantee you when his family's power went out though if he was at work um, they didn't call him to the system no, it was a text yeah <laughs> <laughs> to the to the man to the yeah. man in charge Great. Uh, yeah. Our power's out. Absolutely. What are we going to do about <laughs> it? And we have a need here, you know, yeah. and just like everybody else had a need. They had a need just like right. everybody else did. But they didn't have to go through their power company and, and do all that. They went straight. We say in Jersey, I yeah. know a guy. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, th that's a, that's a, and that's one of the great things. We do. Yeah. We do know a guy. Absolutely. And, uh, and so, and I think that's the uniqueness of, of who we are in Christ is that we have the ability in prayer to mm -hmm. go to the guy, yeah, go to the one, and and bring that request directly to him versus calling into the system. And yeah, um, or 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 that or trying to make uh, you know working our breakers to get the power back, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and we like see that. this in other religions. They, they muddy the water, right? Yeah. I mean, we have a direct line. It, but yet we put, like, I, I, I mean, I think of Catholicism, you know, where yeah. you add the priest, you add your ancestors, you add saints. Right. Why? Yeah. You've got the direct line. Direct line. The Father. Yeah. I yeah. don't understand that. I, I, I've had discussions yeah. with people before. They just, you know, they, they try and explain it. I say, why? Yeah. It's, You've it's got the ear of Jesus. You've yeah, got yeah. the ear of God. Direct. You know. And people may get a little blown away from the fact that, well, how does God do that? Well, I don't know, other than he's all-powerful. Well, then I could and ask you, how does your ancestor do that? Yeah. How do, you know <laughs> what I mean? Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, we're just it's elevating a, people yeah, to that God's no, uh, Absolutely, absolutely. And and it's interesting what people hold on to. No, it, it, well, and, and I, 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 know, I know for me personally, one of the things that one of the, one of the most, I guess, tumultuous times in my personal life was when my mother died. And going through that, because um, I counted on her a lot emotionally to yeah. kind of, kind of sure. she was my prop, you yeah. know. Uh, if I had a cheerleader, boy, it was her, you know. Yeah. And also my cheerleader's gone. And, and uh, really distraught for a while. Where yeah. was I going to go, mm -hmm. you know, to find that? And really through just some counseling and some study of the scriptures, and, and really I... I it wasn't an audible voice, but God says you were assigning to a person something that belonged to me. Right. Absolutely. That belonged to me. And um, you know, I don't pray to my mother. Right. <laughs> she's in heaven. <laughs> she knew Jesus, and uh, she's. I don't. I don't know what she knows, what she doesn't know. Um, um, you, you know, but but yeah. uh, J J Jesus doesn't need her to take care of him. No. No. <laughs> Yeah. He didn't need her to take care of me. Yeah, he needs nothing. That's right. Yeah, he, I, I got this. And, and <laughs> I got me, this, Luana. You know, yeah, looking, Mark. <laughs> yeah, looking down from heaven, seeing what's going on in the world, yeah. that would be awful. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I would think that they're just up there glorifying God. You know. Yeah. 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 Waiting. Waiting. Oh, you're here. That's yeah. Right. Sure. <laughs> Come when on we're in. Here they get. Come you know, on in. Whatever. The water's However fine. that works. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I don't think they're concerned. No, they, I. Yeah. I think. Everything and the glory of God, the presence. Yeah, yeah. and um, anyways, well, thanks for for being here tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, again, I, those of you who are watching online, we, um, again, maybe you heard some of this. I know the sound kind of got a little little off last week and everything, and I just mm -hmm. wasn't real satisfied. I, I didn't want it because I think it's an important issue uh, of knowing God and knowing who He is. But um, just a few. Were 
prayer, prayer requests. I know that have gone out and uh, just have a couple of, of relatives of people in our church that are in the hospital. We know some people are having follow-up medical appointments. We've had some praises this week, uh, people getting good reports from doctors and, and, uh, yeah. and things. I think we, we, we Sunday we enter Holy Week. Um, we tend to not, but we have Palm Sunday. Oh, and, yeah. and, you know, really uh, something, you know, we talk about Christmas. A lot of people like Christmas, but there's a lot of years in the church before they started celebrating Christmas. Yeah. But Easter is something that. And Christmas points uh, to Easter. Yeah, yeah. Easter's where it's at. And uh, that's, that's really our, this is, this is our holiday. Absolutely. Um, you, you know, you, you uh, the significance of that. I, I, uh, my sister's been going through some old pictures, family pictures of ours, and my dad was a holiday guy. He liked holidays, yeah. and uh, but Easter was really different for us because it was all focused. Uh, I mean, we hunted eggs and did those things, but boy, it was really centered around worship and church and yeah. and, uh, and meaning. Yeah, meaning. Right. And, and, I, and and truth is, every Sunday's Resurrection Sunday for us. Sure. That's, that's sure. but, that but, but it doesn't do any it doesn't do any harm. And this is one thing that I do think our maybe our liturgical brothers do that I like. Uh, they celebrate the whole week and they tell the story. Right. We're not very good at that sometimes. No. And, yeah. and, uh, but I think there's some meaning in that, that we come in and look at Palm Sunday and uh, uh, Monday, Thursday, mm-hmm. where we celebrate the Lord's Supper and Good Friday, and then we come in on Easter Sunday. Yeah. I know we tried to do some community things before. They said, you're celebrating Easter too early. We want to get there, and we want to come in Sunday morning and go. He's risen, you know. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah. And so I, I, you know, I get it. I get it. That's, burn out. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but again, thank you for being here. Just uh, hope you're in worship Sunday. Just those prayer requests. I'm going to close this in prayer tonight, and and uh, hope to see you Sunday uh, in person. Yeah, we're we're more and more coming ba- able to come back and. We've got a good Sunday school class going and, and uh, um, uh, children's activities going here on Wednesday night. So I uh, just, just pray that, that we continue moving, uh, just praying God's protection over us, uh, that, that, that we just stay healthy and, uh, and wisdom. we'll keep our momentum going. And, and sure. Things, so. Let me pray. Father, we come to you tonight, and again, thank you. Um, we thank you for being a personal God who's chosen to reveal himself to us. Uh, you've not kept in yourself hidden. Um, we don't know everything about you. Um, I think we'll spend eternity trying to figure that out, who you are because of your greatness and uh, your majesty and who you are. That, that, uh, but you have. We can know you. And you've chosen to reveal yourself to us. And, um, and so, Father, we, we, we desire to go deeper into that relationship. I I think about the progression that, Father, we know you as, yes, creator, and that you provide for us and sustain us in all ways, that uh, through Christ you're our Savior, and um, you've redeemed us into, into a right relationship with you. Uh, you're Lord and Master, and, and uh, that we, we King, that we, we worship and submit to. But you're also Father. And you may be a king, but you're our Father, too. And to have a father that's a king is a, a pretty special thing. And Lord, you even came to a place when you told your disciples through Jesus that um, I don't call you servants anymore, you're friends. And Father, we desire that, to know you as friend. Um, we know you're a much better friend to us than we are to you. Uh, but Lord, help us. Help us to be a good friend and to um, just bless you through that. Father, thank you for Wayne, for his family. Uh, thank you for those who are listening tonight, either alive or, or later by, by recording, Lord, and bless them. We, you know the needs, Father, those in the hospital. Uh, we, we pray for them. Lift them up to you, dealing, dealing with medical issues. Uh, Father, we pray for those who've gotten good reports and just give you praise and thanksgiving for that. Uh, we pray for wisdom as a church, Father, to, to know um, how, Father, to, to navigate uh, safely. Father, in this world, we want to keep moving forward. Um, Lord, help us and guide us in fulfilling our mission. We believe it's just a restatement of, of the great commission that Jesus gave to his disciples, Lord. And uh, we, we do. We want to see your kingdom come and your will be done in Burke Burnett, Texas, as it is in heaven. And so, Lord, we know that 
though that's got to start here in our lives and our church for that to happen. Again, Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, and uh, see you Sunday.